so routes of drug administration means that we have various routes from where drugs can be administered first we start with the oral route so oral route is uh, when medications are taken by means of mouth that is oral route and uh, then they will be observed from the gastrointestinal tract uh, that is your stomach and intestine and then the drug will reach the bloodstream so that is the short overview of oral route uh, examples of drugs taken by the mouth are uh, solid form for example tablets and capsules these are the solid forms of the drugs which are taken by mouth then liquid forms of the drugs for example solutions cough syrups suspensions liquid antibiotics so these are the liquid forms of the drugs uh, that can be taken by means of mouth so you have various solid forms of the drugs like tablets capsule and you have liquid forms of the drug like solutions and uh, advantages of the oral route is it's much more convenient we can say uh, it's more comfortable drugs are easier to administer uh, more cost-effective drugs are available in oral route and wide range of formulations mean that uh, tablets that is solid form of the drug as well as liquid form of the drug like solution suspension uh, both are available so these are some of the advantages of the oral route then we also have some drawbacks of the oral route drawbacks or cones we can say so the drawbacks are uh, various by bio, uh, bioavailability that is variable absorption is available uh, that means that the drug from the stomach will be absorbed first into the bloodstream then it goes to the liver in the liver usually first pass metabolism occurs so uh, in case of oral route the drug goes from the stomach into the blood then into the liver in the liver metabolism occurs then so the actual then from the liver the drug reaches the bloodstream so the actual quantity of drug that reaches the bloodstream is low in oral route compared to the injectable route or parenteral route where directly the drug reaches the bloodstream so this is the concept of first pass metabolism because of which the oral route by availability or the effective blood concentration of the drug is low in oral route uh, other side effects like gastrointestinal side effect nausea diarrhea are also common with the oral route because they are present in the stomach then we have parental route so parental route simply means that injectable route so you have various injectable routes like uh, for example you have intramuscular route so in this case uh, they are drugs are injected into the muscles uh, various vaccines and antibiotics can be given uh, through intravenous routes various drugs can be given for example chemotherapy drugs anesthesia drugs and uh, through subcutaneous routes uh, the injection is just given beneath the skin which is subcutaneous uh, for example insulin is commonly given through subcutaneous route various vaccinations can be given through subcutaneous route so in short parental route means injectable routes having intramuscular or intravenous where drugs are given into the vein and subcutaneous just beneath the skin uh, drugs are given then we have uh, various advantages of parental route uh, that parental route has a rapid onset of action why because it bypasses the first pass metabolism you directly inject the drug into the blood uh, so there is high bioavailability mean high concentration of the drug is obtained in the blood precise dosing mean you can adjust the dose of the drug directly and uh, bypasses the first pass metabolism uh, as we discussed at the parental route that's why much more high bioavailability or high concentration of drug is obtained in the blood in parental route or injectable route then we have various disadvantages that uh, parental route is much more invasive because you have to penetrate for example the vein in IV route so it is much more painful uh, there are also since you are dealing directly with the blood so there is a risk of infection also bleeding or uh, nerve damage uh, moreover uh, requires medical expertise only an expert can give a medication through parenteral or injectable routes so it also requires medical expertise these are some uh, drawbacks of the we can say parenteral route so this is the overview of parenteral route then we will discuss another route that is topical route so what do you mean by topical route topical route simply means that medication will be given uh, will be given or applied to the skin or mucosa okay? so mucous membrane or skin uh, drugs are applied so we have various examples of drug which are given through topical routes for example creams and ointments okay uh, various creams for example hydrocortisone cream various antibiotics ointments for wounds uh, eye drops they are applied on the eye mucosa uh, air drops applied to the air mucosa nasal drops applied to the nasal mucosa so all these are uh, considered among the topical routes okay we including various creams ointments and drops uh, then advantages of the topical route is uh, they are really used for local effect remember not for systemic mean uh, the drugs are applied on the skin to achieve the local effect on the skin and not so it minimizes the systemic side effects so because drug will not be absorbed into the blood they are only applied for the local skin application 
and they are easier to administer yes and uh, cosmetic application skin is related to cosmetic application for uh, decreasing the scar and those things so it is cosmetically uh, useful then disadvantages of the topical route are uh, limited absorption yes uh, if you want a systemic effects you will not use this uh, uh, skin irritation is possible with uh, certain creams and ornaments if the person is allergic to it. Uh, moreover, uh, variable bioavailability. So bioavailability definitely it, it is variable because uh, the drug is usually for the local effect. So uh, it does not reach the bloodstream. Uh, we are using of course it for the local effect. And there is potential for uh, overdose. Of course, uh, it should be used in a limited quantity. Do not overdose then it will have it uh, side effects. Then we have another route which is inhalational route. So inhalation route simply means that a medication will be inhaled into the lungs. Uh, usually asthma people uses various nebulizer and inhalers. Uh, this, this is simply example of inhalation route. Medications are inhaled into the lungs. Uh, then advantages of the inhalational routes include uh, that it is rapid onset of action. Yes. Uh, so uh, higher bioavailability uh, they are morely used for localized effects so inhalation route has a very good localized effect on the lungs area where bronchodilation is needed uh, in for example asthma patients and uh, it is much more convenient uh, it is very convenient you simply use an inhaler uh, you puff give few puffs into the uh, mouth and it will reach the lungs so it is convenient route then uh, disadvantages are uh, it require proper technique yes if you do not use the proper technique proper uh, drug concentration will not be achieved in the lungs and it will not relieve symptoms of asthma uh, potential for bronchospasm some drugs can show abnormal uh, reaction uh, leading to bronchospasm in the lungs and systemic side effects if the drug is uh, absorbed into the bloodstream for example from the lungs it can cause various side effects like hypokalemia that is electrolyte imbalance moreover uh, device maintenance if the inhaler or nebulizer device uh, become uh, abnormal so that is the device issue can also occur then we have another route which is rectal route so rectal route simply mean medication will be given uh, directly into the rectum so examples are suppositories and enemas so suppositories for example given for pain relief into the rectum and uh, enemas are usually used for bowel preparation bowel preparation mean before the surgery you need to empty the bowel and you use enema which are inserted into the rectum and then your rectum become empty of the stool and feces and this is necessary before the surgery and that is bowel preparation now we will discuss uh, various uh, advantages of the rectal lute which include that uh, the rectal lute is again used for localized effect usually and uh, it can also avoid the first pass metabolism means that uh, if you want to give the drug that is absorbed into the bloodstream directly so uh, also rectal lute is preferred over the oral lute in those cases where you want to bypass the first pass metabolism and uh, again if patient cannot swallow uh, some drugs so rectal lute can also be used in those cases to give drugs and indirect route you can say and uh, disadvantage is that limited absorption and uh, definitely it's uncomfortable com compared to the oral lute rectal lute is uncomfortable and rectal irritation can also occur uh, bioavailability can vary mean that the drug concentration that is a that is uh, finally comes into the bloodstream is variable in rectal route it can change so then we have another route that is vaginal route uh, so vaginal route simply mean that medications are directly given into the vagina uh, example are various they are used for various purposes for example if someone has a yeast infection in the vagina vaginal tablets could be used various creams are also available uh, for example for hormone replacement therapy and uh, rings for example contraceptive devices uh, contraceptive devices uh, and rings can be implanted into the vagina and uh, they release the drug and this prevents the uh, child development for example if someone don't want to conceive another baby so that's for those purposes then we have advantages of the vaginal route again vaginal route if you want to achieve the local effect for example if someone have vaginal infection of a specific site so a localized effect can be needed uh, yes and at the same time we will avoid the systemic side effects mean drug won't be absorbed much into the bloodstream when you have the local effect uh, it is uh, yes convenient for use uh, for achieving local effect and it can be used for gynecological condition as we discussed if someone has infection of that specific site 
and the disadvantages is again if you want to achieve bloods uh, bloodstream level of the drug like systemic effect then it's not useful because it has limited absorption and sometimes vaginal irritation can occur in response to the drug abnormal response can occur and uh, yes bioavailability vary as we discussed and uh, it requires a proper insertion technique uh, that is also necessary to achieve the effective uh, to effective effect of the drug uh, proper technique has to be used for applying the drugs into the particular route uh, then we will discuss another route which is the transdermal route so transdermal route means medication again they are applied to the skin but this time they will be observed into the bloodstream in transdermal route uh, examples are various patches for example nicotine patches commonly used uh, applied to the skin they can be observed into the bloodstream various gels for example testosterone gel can be applied to skin and they are observed into the bloodstream so the difference from the topical route in transdermal route is that topical route has a local effect on the skin and minimal systemic effect in transdermal route medication are observed into the bloodstream so they show systemic effect that's the difference then uh, various advantages of the transdermal route include uh, it is convenient uh, long lasting effect okay uh, minimize systemic side effects but still its systemic effects are uh, more than those of the topical route uh, it is easier to administer yes it is easier route uh, applied directly to the skin and uh, disadvantages of the transdermal route include uh, variable absorption can occur sometimes uh, ir irritation to the drug can occur skin irritation or allergy reaction can occur uh, there is also potential for overdose if you use the abnormal dose of the drug uh, limited by availability of course uh, medication absorbed through the transdermal route is less compared to the uh, injectable route for example so by availability means into the blood less concentration of the blood is obtained but still it's more than the topical route then we have special routes uh, certain special routes which are used in some special condition uh, these are less likely routes but in, in some special condition like cancer patients or other shock patients we can use these routes uh, for example intra arterial routes so intra arterial route simply as the name indicate it will use the arteries okay so normally we use veins but we use arteries for injection of the drug then that is intra arterial route so you will administer the drug into an artery examples are uh, cancer patients you use chemotherapy drugs they can be injected into the artery to achieve more effective effect then we have thrombolytic drugs for example for stroke tre treatment we can give uh, drugs into the directly arteries so that was about intra arterial route then we have intra thecal route so what do you mean by intra thecal route in this cases medication are administered into the spinal canal we know that spinal canal which surround your spinal cord so if you inject the drug into the spinal canal that is intrathecal route and they can be used for uh, pain management for example uh, morphine can be injected through the intrathecal route for pain of the spinal cord issues and uh, for various cancers we can also use this routes chemotherapy drugs can be also given through the intrathecal route then we can discuss the epidural route so epidural route simply means that uh, you will give the drug into the epidural space so epidural space epi epidu uh, basically durometer is a layer surrounding your spinal cord and brain so just outside durometer we have epidural space and if you give drug into that space uh, that is epidural route and examples we can give drugs again for the pain management uh, into the epidural space of the spinal cord for example for labor analgesia uh, where child delivery occur so various nerves can be blocked through this route and uh, so these are some uses of the epidural route then we can discuss about intraocular route so intraocular route is administration directly into the eye okay so in this case you are injecting the drug into the eye layer for example various antibiotics can be given for endophthalmitis treatment into the eyes directly so endophthalmitis is infection of the inner layer of the eye so you inject the antibiotics into the eye inside the layer so that is intraocular roots then we have uh, intraperitoneal layer peritoneal you know peritoneal cavity is in the abdomen so if you give drug directly into the abdominal cavity that is intraperitoneal roots again uh, ovarian cancer we know can spread into peritoneal cavity so you can give various drugs to have much effective local effect 
chemotherapy drugs can be given into intraperitoneal routine over in cancer treatment uh, various antibiotics can be given if there is peritonitis infection of that specific abdominal cavity is present then you can give administer uh, antibiotics into the intraperitoneal route then we have another rule that is intrapleural route so intrapleural route simply means you will administer drug into the pleural space you know that pleura surround the lungs this is a space surrounding the lungs so if you drug if you give the drug into the pleura pleural space that is intrapleural route uh, various chemotherapy drugs if there is specifically lung cancer uh, various chemotherapy drugs can be administered to the intrapleural space also for pain management uh, drugs can be given then we have intramuscular depot route so intramuscular depot route is different from the intramuscular route we discussed in the parent route in a sense that here you will have a drug concentration which is sustained release so slowly slowly drug will be released over a long period of time and that is intramuscular depot route uh, so examples are uh, you can use it for hormone replacement therapy for example to improve the testosterone level and uh, psychiatric medications various antipsychotics can also be given for or, uh, for uh, intramuscular depot route then uh, we have another route that is subarachnoid route so subarachnoid route what we do we administer the drug into the space surrounding the spinal cord so subarachnoid space is again uh, you know you have a arachnoid meter pi meter dura meter so it is a space between the dura meter and arachnoid meter subarachnoid space and uh, if you give drug into this space surrounding the brain and spinal cord there that is subarachnoid space it can also be used for various purposes then we have intraosseous route so intraosseous routes means administration directly into the bone marrow so if you inject the drug directly into the bone marrow so that is intraosseous route and uh, this is usually used in uh, emergency situations for example if someone has a cardiac arrest then drugs can be given into this intraosseous route and uh, in pediatric patient uh, this is very important uh, if you have a shock patient or a child where venous access is not possible uh, where you are not able to find any vein to give the drug uh, you can use this intraosseous route okay so in a very clear patient intraosseous route can be used for delivery of medication directly into the bone marrow and this will have the rapid effect uh, to achieve its drug effect